welcome back to week five of 52 Reason and Record Tips, the traveling edition. I'm on the road this week, so I'm not going to do too much of the headshot because I don't really have the best background for this here. But you're going to get a lot of great information anyways. All right, bye. One of the things that I like to do in my own productions is put limitations on myself, and that allows me to be much more creative. There's an example of this on the Propellerhead blog page where I created an entire song using strictly one drum sample. And you can see that on this link here. My latest limitation that I'm placing on myself is to create entire pieces of music without using any samples whatsoever. And while that might sound easy, think about the core piece of your music. And one of the core pieces is the drums. And if you can imagine creating a piece of music without using any sampled drums, that could be a little tricky. So what we're going to be talking about this week is using synthesizers to create the drum sounds. And in particular, I'm going to use the Thor synthesizer to do this. I'm going to show you examples of how you can create a kick, a snare, hats, and a clap. And I've uploaded all of the patches that I'm going to show you to this link here. So let's start with the kick. So if you look here, I have a Thor. And what I've done is I've used an analog oscillator with a triangle waveform. And I've set the octave to a value of 3. And what I'm going to be doing to get the sound to give it that attack portion is to use the mod envelope and actually affect the pitch of the sound using the mod envelope in the matrix modulation. So I'm going to say set source to mod envelope and the amount is 45 and the destination is the oscillator one pitch. And by using a very short attack, decay, and release time, I'm going to get a very short effect on the pitch if you listen to this. Now if I wanted to do a little bit longer, I can increase the mod envelope decay and release. And if I also increase the amp envelope decay and release, you can start to hear on that drum sound there's a lot more, a longer type of a sound. Now as I shorten that up, you can hear how the sound is being affected here. Of course, if you try out different oscillator types or waveform types, you're going to get a different texture. So we're going to keep it at that one for now. Now let's go to the snare. Let's look at this snare sound here. If you can see what I've done is I've actually using that same basic patch that we created on the kick, the analog oscillator with a triangle wave, we're going to keep that as a basis for most of the patches that we create when we, when we deal with percussion sounds. But what I'm doing with the snare sound is I'm adding in a noise oscillator set to white noise, and I'm running that through another filter, the state variable filter set to notch mode so I can filter out specific frequencies and really hone in on the snare sound. And in this particular patch, I'm using the analog oscillator, the triangle waveform, as the shell of the snare and the white noise as the snare sounds themselves. Now if I want to take those snares and tighten them up a bit, I can just change the amp envelope. If I want to make them a little bit looser, I just increase that decay. Also notice that I've changed filter to envelope amount to zero because I don't want the filter on envelope to affect the actual filter here. I want to dial in an exact tone. All right, moving on. Let's look at the hats. If you notice here on the hats, I'm also still using that analog oscillator, but I've got it set to a really high range, octave range of nine. So it's giving me a really high frequency. And I'm also using the noise oscillator. And what I'm doing at this point is I'm using two state variable filters set to not to high pass mode. And I'm filtering out all of the low frequencies on that analog oscillator so I can just get that high tingy sound. And on the second filter, I'm getting it, I'm introducing a little bit of resonance to get some ring. So if we hear that one, we can hear a nice closed hat sound. But what I want to do is actually be able to have both an open and a closed hat sound come out of the same patch. And the way we're going to do that is by using this button on the Thor to open or close the hat. 
We do that by selecting the button as a source in the modulation matrix, and we're going to change the amp envelope decay and release and set their amounts to 63 and 62. So that every time I push this button, it opens that up. And of course, anything that I do there could be recorded as part of the sequence as well. All right, the last thing in the chain here is I'm going to show you how to create a hand clap sound. Now, hand clap is a particularly fun patch to make because when you think about a hand clap, usually it's going to be a sound where there's a couple of people clapping their hands together at the same time and one of them might be slightly off. And the way we're going to create that sound is this time we're going to just use one single noise oscillator. And we're going to route that same oscillator to two different filters. But instead of using the mixer and routing directly into the filter, I'm actually going to route them using the modulation matrix. If you can see here, I've got oscillator 1 routed twice through filter 1 and filter 2. And instead of it always going through those filters, I'm using the mod envelope and the filter envelope as the scale that decide when those oscillators go through the filters. And if I use the mod envelope as a scale, I can set a delay amount. So when I play this clap sound, if I change this delay sound or this delay amount to be a little bit higher, you can hear how the claps start to lag behind each other. And as I lower that delay amount, you can hear there that I'm actually getting a tighter clap sound. All right, so we've covered a few different techniques for creating percussion or drum sounds using synthesis. Um, so take these patches and experiment. Come up with your own sounds and see what you can add to your music when you create your own drum sounds. Also, if you have any questions about the sounds I've created here or want to create a specific sound, please send me an email. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you next week. And keep sending those emails for requests for future episodes. Bye.